Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel Lady Literacy. Today in this video I wanted to talk about why you need to read the Diviner series by Libba Bray, so let's get started. I started reading the Diviner series last year, at the end of last year, and I was completely taken away with it. I thought it was an amazing series and have since been trying to get all of my friends to start reading it. It's hard to talk about why someone should read a series when they haven't read the first book yet. Usually series build off of the first book and all of the books that come before it. So there are things that I cannot talk about in the first Diviner's book series because I don't want to spoil the story. And then because of those things, I can't really talk about the second, third, and fourth book very easily because the problems and the sequence of events that happen in those books is all related to what happens in the first book and parts of the first book that I can't talk about. So instead, I decided to put together a video that would share why I think everybody should read the Diviner series without giving away any spoilers. Let me just start you off with the premise of the Diviners book, the very first book in the Diviner series. The book starts out with a young girl named Evie, and Evie lives in a small town. I want to say it's Ohio. I don't remember where her hometown is. But basically, Evie is a young girl um, about high school age, and she has this ability to object read. And what that means is she can touch an object that belongs to somebody else, say these glasses, and read into its history. Kind of like the opposite of seeing into the future, but really seeing into someone's past. The story starts with Evie at this party and she's had a little bit to drink and she's around her friends and she wants to show off. She really likes being the center of attention. And so she suggests that she performs a trick where she's object reading and she takes the object of a young boy that's around her age and basically tells everybody that he has been unfaithful to his girlfriend. This creates an uproar in their small town. Later on, Evie's mom tells her that she needs to make a public apology and basically say that she lied. And Evie knows that she didn't lie, so she doesn't want to apologize for something that she didn't do wrong. However, at the same time, she doesn't want to be transparent with the fact that she has this supernatural power because she doesn't know how people are going to receive it. So she's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. This ends up being the last straw for Evie's parents. They decide that she is not making good decisions in this town and now she has a bad reputation of lying. So her mother sends her off to New York to live with her uncle who owns a museum of creepy and supernatural items from the past. Upon arriving in New York, Evie already gets to meet some of the other major characters in the book like Sam Lloyd and Jericho and her best friend Mabel, as well as a young girl named Theta. Now, all of these characters are also around the same age. So the majority of the characters in the book are at this young adult high school age. Well, throughout the story, Evie is getting close with her, her uncle, Will, and there's this murder at the beginning of the book that the police are trying to solve. And they end up asking Will for help because they think that he might be able to offer a perspective that they're not getting from the police force. And this is really where the whole story begins. Slowly, the main characters in the book hear about what is called the diviners. Um, Will is really interested in diviner abilities and Evie starts realizing that she might be a diviner as well as some of the other characters that we've met in the book. And they end up becoming an incredibly important role in solving this big overarching problem that takes part in the entire series. <laughs> So now that you have a little background understanding of how the series starts out, let me share with you why you need to read this series. So first of all, it's just in general an incredible series and I've never read anything like it before and that's saying something because I read a lot. Libba Bray manages to pull together four different or maybe three different genres throughout this series. The first dominant genre that you're going to find in this series is historical fiction. The book is set in the 1920s. And a lot of the historical events that happen in the book are things that actually happened in the 1920s and around that era. 
Um, you hear about the Ziegfeld Follies and people who are pushing for something called eugenics. Many of the characters face racism. The KKK is prominent in the story. And there are some other things that I don't want to share that happen historically because I don't want to spoil the series for you. This book is also supernatural slash horror slash suspense. I'm kind of combining that genre all together as one. Emphasis on the supernatural. I just recently read, you can see it right here, Lee Bardugo's Ninth House, and there it has some of that same supernatural element. So if you liked that story, then you would definitely like The Diviners as well. I say supernatural because the characters have these supernatural abilities, like um, being able to read objects, like you see Evie, um, healing powers, being able to predict the future, being able to make yourself invisible, etc. There's also ghosts and demonic presences in the book, but not in a way that's going to make you feel like frightened or too scared. This is not a Stephen King scary novel. It's more of a thriller suspense and there's definitely going to be parts where you're creeped out or anxious, but in a great way. Like it, it's not too scary that you're going to have bad dreams, but it's just enough scary that you're going to be a hundred percent on the edge of your seat wondering what's going to happen next. And then lastly, it's also science fiction. One of the biggest and most important characters in the book is a famous scientist, and he plays a huge role in the overarching problem of the story. Um, one of the characters is also in love with science, and she views everything from a scientific perspective rather than a supernatural perspective, like many of the other characters. And then one character's life is completely dependent on science which you'll see if you read the book. So like I said, this book just ties together so many different genres. I love fantasy science fiction books, but I've never seen it done so well with the supernatural element and with historical fiction. So I just really, really loved all the different genres that tied into it. It completely set this series apart from any other series I've ever read. Another reason why you should read this book is because it has a diverse ensemble cast. And when I say diverse, I'm not just speaking in terms of race and ethnicity. I'm also speaking in terms of religion, in terms of sexual orientation, and in terms of age. And there's probably something else that I'm forgetting about as well. In this book, you're going to see characters of different ethnic backgrounds. One of the characters is Russian. One of the characters is Jewish. We have many black characters and Asian American characters and white characters, but also amongst those characters, there are gay characters, lesbian characters, and even an asexual character. There's also a character with a disability, and I really appreciated that Liva Bray brought in that element to the story because you don't often see your main characters with disabilities. I feel like authors have gotten a lot better about writing stories that are inclusive to a lot of different races and ethnic backgrounds, but I still feel like we're lacking in characters that feature different disabilities. So I appreciated that aspect of the book as well. And then also, as I said, there are characters of different ages. Most of the characters are around young adult high school age, but one of the very main characters who's very important to the story is a young boy at the, around an elementary age. And then we also have older characters who are, um, you know, I don't know, maybe 30s, 40s, and then even very, very old aged characters who are also very central to the story. So I really love that throughout the book, you're going to meet a bunch of different characters from a bunch of different backgrounds um, and upbringings and experiences. And I thought this was really interesting because the book is set in the 1920s, which to me is, you know, I don't even know anyone that was born in the 1920s. And yet you're going to meet characters in the series who are in their 80s and were born in the 1800s and they bring an, an entirely different perspective to even what's going on in the 1920s. So like I said, there's a lot of different characters, a very diverse representation. Lastly, I just wanted to share some other reasons why you should read these books. Another reason you should read this book is because it features all different perspectives of the characters. So from chapter to chapter, you're going to hear from different points of view and it's done in a way that it doesn't make you wait for a problem. Some books that are written in different perspectives make you have to wait to find out what's going to happen next and you have to wait until you get to that character again and if you're filtering through a lot of characters, you can be waiting a while for a storyline for one character to continue. I didn't really have that problem when I was reading this book. If it switched from Theta's to Evie's perspective, I would still have a decent understanding of what was going on with Theta, 
even if I was in Evie's mind or Evie's perspective. And even within the chapter, it might switch points of view because this book is written in third person omniscient. So I really appreciated that I got to understand how the characters were feeling and getting in the mind of most of the dominant and key characters in the book. Also, I just want to say again, it's set in the 1920s and I love that. I haven't read many books that are set during the 1920s, so I really enjoyed that. And I think there are more that I've read recently. Like I find, you know, I read The Great Gatsby, but I think City of Girls is also written around the same time. Um, but other than that, I can't think of many books that I've read that are set during this time period. So I was really excited about that element of the book. Also, I started by reading a paperback version of The Diviners, but because I couldn't carry the book around with me while I was driving, I ended up switching back and forth between audiobook and then ended up listening to most of the books on audiobook and the audiobooks were done really, really well. So if you like listening to audiobooks rather than reading a hard copy, you would really enjoy these audiobooks. She does a great job of changing her pitch to be different characters and she's able to enact different accents very well. Um, I just felt like I was in the story when I was listening to her read. So again, if you like audiobooks, you would probably really enjoy these audiobooks. I watched another YouTuber's video who said that she felt like the books were a little too long. Um, so if you like lengthier books, this might not be the book for you, except that none of the descriptions felt unnecessary. I've read books where I'm just waiting for the author to finally get to the point and get to the problem. And that's not an issue I felt with this book. All of the details and descriptions that Libba Bray goes into, I feel like are necessary and help to continue to paint a picture of really what was going on at the time, of what things looked like, felt like, sound like, whatever. I think all of the descriptions are necessary and I was never at any point bored. And I think that's something that I can run into when I'm reading a longer book. So the fact that I didn't get bored while reading this, I think says a lot. So there you have it. Some reasons why you should read The Diviners. Please, I hope that if you are just finishing a book, that the next series you pick up is the Diviner series by Libba Bray. I really don't think you'll regret it. I think you'll thank me for it. <laughs> it was amazing and I'm so bummed that one, it's not more popular than it is, and two, that it took me so long to read it when it's been in the back of my mind for a couple of years now. She did just finish her last book recently, either in 2019 or 2020, so perhaps the reason why this series hasn't blown up yet is just because it was taking her a long time to release the books. So I'm hoping that this video and others out there can really help get people reading this book because I am so ready for a show or a movie to be made out of this book and you will be too after you read it, trust me. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.